Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Metro AV Tech Tips. I'm your host today, Adam Rogers. Uh, you'll notice that I am uh, 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 sans Brent today. Uh, and that's because uh, he found some uh, amazing way of figuring out how to go out to California. So, uh, no, I'm kidding. He's going out there to do some work. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, he's. Uh, we wish him all the best out there in L.A. for the moment. Uh, but, uh, in fact, I think he may even wind up being in the chat today uh, with what's going on. So, uh, today is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. Uh, normally, we get into a little bit more uh, shenanigans when there's two of us here. Uh, so, today is going to be... Uh, a little bit calm down a little bit because I don't have anybody to bounce uh, jokes and stuff off of today. But uh, I think we're going to have some some good information to be sent out to it. So uh, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and do our normal intros and whatnot. As always, everybody, thank you for checking out today's episode. Uh, if you have any questions about whatever it is that I am talking about today, you can, of course, leave it over in the chat section over on that side if you're on YouTube. And I think it's down below on Facebook. Uh, or if you're watching this after the fact, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below. Uh, we do monitor those comments uh, uh, daily and throughout the day. So if you have anything that you want to ask about either what I'm talking about today or something entirely different, please go ahead and leave it down below. Um, also, go ahead and give us some ideas for different show topics. What do you want to hear us talk about here on Metro AV Tech Tips? Uh, we're always looking for new ideas and new stuff to talk about, so please let us know what you want to hear. Uh, we, we'll be happy to talk about it uh, as well on air, possibly. So, uh, with that said, today's topic is uh, pretty straightforward. So, we'll go ahead and hit the button here, see if I can get it to work right correctly. Uh, so, today's topic is the difference, what is the difference between an NVR and a DVR? So, this one is really simple. A DVR is for analog cameras and NVR is for IP cameras. That's basically it. All right, so there's a lot more involved with it than just that. That's that's the really straightforward way of saying it. Uh, that's a really easy way to say, okay, this is where, you know, the, the analog cameras, this is kind of NVR that you need for the analog cameras. This is kind of the DVR, or uh, sorry, NVR that you need for the IP cameras, DVR for the analog cameras. Um, but the main thing is, is that when should we use each one? Because even today, the analog cameras, and I keep putting air quotes on that because analog isn't really analog anymore. Uh, we have AHD, CVI, TVI, uh, CVBS, which is still basically analog. Um, but basically at this point, analog cameras are no longer really analog. We are getting full HD picture through a digital signal. Uh, in fact, we now have the ability to go all the way up to uh, five megapixel and, and even a little bit higher than that uh, as well. So you can get some really high resolution images on an analog signal connection. So that still has its place. And that's what, what I kind of want to talk about today. I know we talked about this once before, uh, maybe a year ago or so, or maybe even a little bit uh, longer than that, um, where we talked about spy clops uh, and when to use an NVR or a DVR. Um, and so I want to talk about that again because we still get these phone calls. These are still calls that come in. When should I use an NVR uh, for this application? And when should I use a DVR? Uh, in fact, I'm reminded of, a, of one of our dealers out in... Uh, um, Washington. Uh, he was designing an, uh, an upgrade for a system. The pre-existing system that was there was an analog system. It was running over coax, uh, and he wanted that the client wanted to upgrade. They were adding additional buildings onto uh, the facility, uh, and it, they were trying to come up with a solution for whatever they needed to do. So we talked them through the idea of using something like a hybrid system, where we have both in a DVR functionality, where it's using the coax cameras that are pre-existing, uh, and upgrading those cameras so we get a better picture, but then also adding in the new IP cameras so we get an even better picture and more functionality. So, with that said, what I wanted to do today was go ahead and actually flip this around. We're gonna do a top-down shot, and I'm gonna do some art here on the whiteboard today. So, we'll go ahead and get that over here. Hit this button here. Make sure I do this right. And there we are. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about today. The first thing that I want to talk about is where we have a DVR and what a DVR system looks like, right? So we're going to start up here at the top. This is going to be our DVR. Now, a DVR system is really straightforward. For the most part, you have a DVR, and then usually you have some kind of power supply of some kind for the cameras, right? So this is the, the, the camera power supply. So, 
from that that camera from this this system here, normally what you have to do is you have to run to each one of the cameras. I'm gonna get my black marker back out again. Like so, we're gonna say that this is a four camera system. We'll keep it nice and simple for uh, the just for today's episode. And we can even put like a little cone on each one of these so we can see that it's a camera. It's a happy little camera. <laughs> All right, so normally what you would have to do, of course, is you, is you would have to get a video signal from the camera back to the DVR. Now, this video signal and the way that it connects is a one to point or a point to point. So it has to go back to a central location where that DVR is. It actually has to plug directly into that DVR in order for it to work correctly. Then on top of that, you would have to have power and normally it's run kind of next in parallel to uh, the video connection. You would have something like this. So you have to power the cameras separate from the video feed. Uh, you, you, know, you would have to ha run either two cables or you would have to run some kind of Siamese where you would have a coax connection and you would have a power connection. And normally we're talking like a, a 12 volt or 24 volt depending on what kind of system you're working with. It does look like a little, a bit, a little bit like a speaker, kind of like the uh, uh, when if you're using, I think it's D Tools. I think D Tools speaker icon looks like that on uh, on the drawings whenever you're messing with it. Um, I don't even remember what they use for their camera icons. I'll have to look look that up again. So this is an analog system. This is uh, what we would call an an, an analog IP or, or pardon me, an analog camera system. Get this over here. So an analog system, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. Um, almost everyone is familiar with an analog system where you have to have some kind of power supply for each camera, uh, or it's usually like a shared power supply system. And then all of those connections have to go back to a DVR for video connection at the DVR. Then from there, the DVR can do whatever it's gonna do. So for instance, if you wanna watch the cameras remotely, uh, you can have like a LAN connection out to a router of some kind. And then that'll give you the ability to view the cameras either through an app on the phone or through a web browser or something else, because that's going to be our network connection. So that's essentially what an analog camera system looks like. So what does an IP camera system look like? Well, the easiest way to describe an IP camera system is just like this. We're going to go ahead and remove this power connection, remove the separate power supply, and we'll clean this up here a little bit here, get rid of these red connections remake these video connections and now we have ourselves a basic nvr system that's all it really is we turn these video cables from uh from a video cable from a coax into an ethernet cable uh and then we run that connection out to the cameras because in a lot of cases the nvr especially these smaller systems you have like four cameras have the poe ports built into the nvr this gives you the ability to uh, <laughs> this gives you the, in, the the ability to have to not need a separate power supply for the cameras because the NVR is using PoE or power over Ethernet and it's powering those cameras wherever they are. This is really handy if you uh, for guys doing installations where you only have to run one cable now. You don't have to run two cables to each camera location. So there's also some other benefits to an NVR system with IP cameras as well because now we can do something like a decentralized system. So we have our NVR system here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add additional cameras somewhere else. So let's say for instance, this is a four channel PoE, four channel PoE. And so the four channel PoE, especially with our Spyclops, we'll talk about that first. So with our Spyclops system, the four channel PoE system has four PoE ports on the back of it. Now these four PoE ports don't mean that that's what it's limited to. In fact, the four channel PoE can actually view up to a total of nine cameras. So it's gonna do the four cameras that are plugged directly into it, but then we can also use an ethernet cable, go out to a separate switch of some kind, uh, make this a PoE switch, right? And actually the, the structure is gonna look more like this. This is gonna go back to the router. The NVR is also going back to the router. But essentially from there, we can go ahead and add additional cameras with those speaker, uh, with what it looks like a speaker. 
and have these be in a separate location. So when we wanna view those cameras on the system, all we have to do is just run additional cabling from this separate PoE switch out to each individual camera. Go the long way here on these ones here. Ba bing And there we go. So now we have the ability to have eight cameras or nine, depending on, on what we're trying, uh, trying to accomplish here with this, by just, adding sim by just simply adding additional cameras. And then we have our, our additional PoE switch, which is giving us a network connection to those cameras. So because we are using a network, the beautiful thing about network systems or IP-based systems is that it doesn't have to phys all these, these things, all these cameras are actually linked back to the NVR over the network. So, so long as we have a hardwired or even a wireless connection back to the NVR and the NVR has the same connection, it's all part of the same LAN or lo the local area network. Write that down so you can look it up if you need to. So long as everything is on the same LAN, those, that NVR can see all those cameras because that's the, the nice thing about IP cameras. That's probably one of the best things about them is that you can expand it. So this is really handy where you have the NVR in one location, but let's say we have an additional building of some kind and we have maybe, well, let's say a fiber connection between one switch to another. That second switch can then act as another node for the rest of these cameras to connect to. Uh, that makes it really easy for uh, distributing out or adding in additional cameras to a system. And that's really where an IP camera is going to come into play in a system like this because you, you don't have to have everything run all the way back to the NVR. You don't have to have the labor of running all of these uh, Ethernet cables back to the NVR if you don't want to. Uh, you can, of course, if that's, you know, if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, this is actually really good. So Randall's saying an NVR is less susceptible to interference, uh, but composite video and DVR systems can actually be run longer distances. That's true. Um, I will say that the, the interference, uh, IP cameras, if you don't know networking, the interference of just a regular network that you're working with, it can also be really difficult to deal with. Uh, you also have uh, what Mark is asking, can the additional NVR IP-based cameras be wireless? Um, like, you know, so systems like the Ring camera? They can, depending on the camera itself. We actually sell uh, one wireless camera. It's a standalone wireless camera. It'll connect to whatever your Wi-Fi is there on site. And that becomes the connection, the LAN connection for that camera. Um, it also has a hardwired connection as well, but you have to power it separately with a 12 volt power supply. But that is an option. So let's say for instance, you have power out at like a, a front gate uh, of someone's property uh, and you've got decent uh, Wi-Fi signal out there as well. Well, you can put a Wi-Fi camera out there. You just power it locally at the camera uh, and then get it connected to the Wi-Fi. And again, so long as it's on the same LAN connection as the rest of the system, that NVR can see that camera and now we're looking at, at the video for it. So yeah, really great question with that. That's the, uh, a, in a really good point as well. So now that we have a system like this, how do we expand it even further? And actually, let's go back to what I was saying before about the gentleman out in, uh, in Washington, uh, where he had an analog system that was pre-existing and they wanted to upgrade it and add an additional building onto the facility. And they wanted to upgrade the cameras a little bit and see what they could do with it. Well, let's go ahead and draw that out uh, for this design. So we have NVRs and DVRs, but now we also have an XVR or what we call a hybrid. So with an XVR, go ahead and put this here like that. An XVR is going to take an analog signal. Let's clean this up here a little bit and make it a little bit more readable and presentable for everybody. So we have our router and it goes out here to the PoE switch uh, over Ethernet. And then we also have it here going to the XVR. Now we're gonna say that these four cameras over here are analog cameras. They're either pre-existing or we just kept using the existing coax uh, to make the connection. So we're gonna go ahead and run these back to the XVR directly. Okay, so those all go and they terminate at, at the XVR and make the connection there. Again, don't forget that we also have to run power to each one of these cameras 
uh, in order to get them all powered up and working on correctly with that. And so in most cases, you can use the pre-existing stuff that's already there, and it just gets powered and connected like so. Ta-da. So now we have those pre-existing cameras, or again, if they're just analog cameras and we're just using the pre-existing coax and power cable that's there, we can run that connection from there. Now, in that separate building, what we can do is we can add a PoE switch in that separate building, run a connection back to the router and keep it on the same network as the XVR. Again, we wanna keep it on the same LAN connection as the XVR because the XVR, just like this one here that I have sitting in front of me, is able to see both analog cameras and IP-based cameras. So we now can create a system that's a little bit more of a diversified system where we have a PoE switch separate. I have too many markers with me today. And we can run an ethernet cable using PoE power out to each one of the cameras. And so this creates a nice decentralized system and we have an upgrade path for the additional cameras that we have going on over here and we have the ability to use the pre-existing cabling saving time and money for both you and for your client and so you're just giving them solutions for something like that so really the question comes down to where and when are you going to use each one and XVR is really straightforward if you have a client who's unsure if they want to do an upgrade of some kind later on. And XVR is super handy because you can say, well, you already have these systems here. Maybe an old DVR has failed and it needs to be replaced. This gives them the ability to go ahead and put in some kind of system that will allow them to see those cameras that are pre-existing. But then also if they think, well, I might upgrade in the future, well, that's perfect because now we can go ahead and add in a PoE switch of some kind add in some additional cameras, run one cable instead of having to run two for each camera, uh, and run those back to that PoE switch, and now that XVR can view those cameras as well. So, really handy, really helpful for a situation like that. Um, and again, I definitely recommend using an XVR in those applications. But again, we kind of run into, well, why would we use an, uh, an, IP, an NVR instead of an XVR? Well, let's talk about that. Let's say, for instance, it's a brand new installation. If it's a brand new installation, you don't have to run additional cabling uh, to those new camera locations. Instead of running two wires, you only have to run one to each one of the camera locations. That's super handy, again, saving time and money for you and the client. If you can just run those connections from an NVR, directly out to the camera like so plus it's a little bit cheaper we're only running one cat 5 or cat 6 in this case i'm i recommend cat 6 uh you can go a little bit further with cat 6 yeah technically um it's one of those things where it's real world applications you might run into an issue so but with that that's basically the differences between an nvr a dvr and then what is an xvr it's kind of a combination of the two um so uh, again, today's a really short episode, everybody. I, I apologize for that. I don't have Brent here to uh, bounce uh, jokes off of and whatnot. So I'd really today's just going to be talking about this and getting the, this good information out to you. Um, also, come back on Friday. We're going to be talking about uh, the XVR that we have from Spyclops Pro uh, and its applications as well. So this is actually a really great piece with the XVR. This gives us that hybrid capabilities. Um, plus it's expandable beyond just the four channels that it has. I'm going to switch this back over here and hit this button over here. There we go. But yeah, come back on Friday. We're going to talk about uh, the uh, Spyclops Pro XVR. This is actually the four channel XVR. This has four analog cameras. It also has the ability to expand past that with additional IP cameras as well. Plus it has the new Spyclops Pro app and all that kind of good stuff with it as well. So definitely, definitely, definitely come back on, on Friday to do that. Now, next week, Brent will be back, and we are actually going to a local dealer uh, to his site locally, uh, and we're going to be going over uh, the truck episode. This is an episode that we've been wanting to do since the very beginning of the series, uh, now two years ago, basically. Uh, and we want to talk to, uh, to, to them there about uh, what should be on the truck. So between now and then, give us your ideas of the things that you have to have on the truck. Whether or not we already think, uh, think of that, uh, that topic or that idea uh, or that item, uh, we still want to hear from you to let us know what you think is a mandatory must-have on the truck at all times. 
what's an item that is a good idea to have give me an item that you think is no one else is going to think of that you always have on the truck with you no matter what that's maybe not a standard tool or standard item that you would see on every other truck that's out there doing these kind of installations so with that, everybody, I'm Adam. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today. Um, again, I do apologize that today is a little bit shorter than normal, but again, I don't have Brent here to, uh, con to keep things going with that, but we'll go ahead and wrap it up with that. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us directly if you have any questions about whatever it is that I've talked about today. Uh, also, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below. Like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell notification to let you know whenever we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at 3 p.m., as well as now every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so hit that to let you know when, uh, whenever we do go live. We are on Facebook now. Uh, we're looking at the idea of getting on LinkedIn as well, so that'll be kind of interesting as well with that. So. Follow us there, follow us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, any of the other uh, big social media platforms. As always, everybody, I'm Adam. We'll go ahead and hit this button. Where is it? There it is, right here. Uh, don't forget, reboot early, reboot often. Don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC and call tech support. <laughs> we'll see you all later. Thanks, everybody.